Hi and welcome to C++ Allegro Made Easy tutorial number 7. Um, I just want to note that I made one change um, to the program that we made last time. Uh, Arrest, I changed it to 60. Oh, and I made changes to this too. Let me change it back. Also have key, key down. So it's basically going to be the same as last tutorial except for that rest. Okay, so now I'm going to be teaching you about um, double buffering. So basically what you've been doing is drawing everything to the screen. Oh sorry, semicolon. You've been drawing everything to the screen. Basically the screen is a buffer. It basically sends everything directly to the screen. And although this can be a method of doing things, once you notice that once you have too many things going on, your images start to flicker and they don't move as fluently and as effective as you want them to because they're, being, they're all being drawn to the screen all at once. Well, there's a trick to solve this and it's called double buffering. It basically draws everything you want to a screen. Basically, let's think of it as two screens, okay? So, screen one and screen 2. So screen 1 is the actual screen where you can visually see everything, right? So screen 1 is where you'll see the box and everything and you'll just see everything on that screen. Screen 2 is where you draw everything to and then you convert it to show everything on screen 1. So prevent flickering. So it draws everything here, then it's takes everything from screen 2 and puts it to screen 1 as one huge image instead of like a bunch of separate little images because when you do it like this you have one image which is a rect fill being drawn to the screen if you did circle then you'd be drawing another image to the screen and it'll be like a bunch of little images being drawn to the screen at once which is called which would cause flickering right if you draw everything as one picture and you just distribute it on here, then it will be a flowing picture. And really, these are all a set of pictures that are moved so fast that it looks like it's actually moving, like it's an animation because it's an illusion. So enough talking about the buffers, um, te like the stuff about buffers and stuff because you won't really get it until I show it to you. So remember how we had Allegro knit make sure you put this after Allegro knit because I used to put it above it and I used to get an arrow and I used to wonder why it's because Allegro knit in this everything in Allegro and this is an Allegro function so what you want to do is put bitmap in capital letters and name it whatever you want preferably buffer and remember the asterisk in front of it and make make it equal to create underscore bitmap now what this does is create our bitmap and this way you just um, um decide the height and width of the bitmap now the bitmap doesn't always have to be the screen size so you want to draw the grass right you might make a, a different bitmap for the grass than you would do for the sky right so you would draw um, the bitmap to be like at um, zero uh, at 640, and you'd make this at like I don't know 440 or something or 40 or something. So then you would make the grass like 40 units high off the ground and across the whole screen. But mainly people use the buffer for the whole screen to drop everything to one buffer and transfer it to the screen. So, uh. When we when we create our bitmap, right, then we get to here. So basically, we want to draw this to the buffer we just created, right? And remember how I said a substitute for the illusion? We are gonna when we draw it to the buffer. We can't see it because you only can see the things that are on the screen. So here's a new function you're going to learn. Blit. And what Blit does 
is you take the whatever you want so the source is our buffer and what you want to draw it to so we want to draw the buffer to the screen right and source basically where you want to draw it from like do you want to draw it from like half of the bitmap or whatever but we want to draw it starting from coordinate zero zero we want to draw the whole bitmap and then the destination on the screen where you want to start drawing from on the screen we also make the zero we want to draw the whole buffer and the width and height is 640 by 480 because the screen size and then this will and we won't have to put this anymore because we have a new function called clear underscore bitmap and you put the bitmaps name in there which is buffer in this case so what this does instead of us having to draw everything black it clears this it clears the bitmap completely so everything that was drawn on it so the rectangle that was drawn on, drawn on it it clears that and then it draws a new rectangle to the buffer and it keeps on doing that and it clears it right and this will um, account for smoother animation so if I were to run this program so control F5 so if I'm moving this some more smoother animation if you can see it's just smoother it's not that staggery if I wanted the movement to be even faster you just lower this because this is how long you rest it for so if I put that to 40 yeah it moves even faster and it doesn't it won't blink or anything and that's basically how you do the double buffering so make sure you do double buffering in every single one of your programs because if you don't do double buffering then later on you'll see your programs flicker oh, and just don't forget to do clear bitmap after your rest function because if you do it if you do it before your rest function then it will it, it will run it runs through the code too fast so it'll just clear it and you won't see anything on the screen just make sure you put it after the rest function and I hope this tutorial was clear to you um I don't think I explained everything as great as I could have so um if you have any questions on double buffering don't be afraid to ask because it's it's the worst feeling in the world when you don't get something so if you don't get it don't be scared to ask because I love answering your questions so that's it for now remember to comment rate and subscribe the more you comment and rate and subscribe, the more I frequently I'll make my videos because I'll be more motivated to. So just keep that in mind and thanks.